click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, Ross here with another fantastic chemistry video and today we're talking about placing lone pairs where required on structures. Now, this is a simple task. It's a very simple task, but students often forget about it and they often forget that there's lone pairs uh, on atoms. They often just don't remember. So I tell my students and probably your faculty tells you to do the same thing, draw them in. Just draw them in yourself. Uh, a lot of times professional chemists like faculty members, we just leave them out because we know they're there and it makes our drawings look a little prettier in our, in our minds when we leave them out. And also just, you know, to be honest with you, it takes a few extra steps to put them in on a, on a chemistry drawing software. So we oftentimes leave them out. But we also know they're there. So you guys have to know too. Now, it's helpful to know how many valence electrons an atom will have. It's also helpful to remember that every atom wants to have a filled valence shell. So all nonmetals want an octet, and hydrogen wants a duet. I know hydrogen's a nonmetal, but it only wants a duet. Okay? And helium also only wants a duet. So we need to know everyone need, every nonmetal needs an octet. So let's look at the first one, top left. We have a nitrogen. Well, nitrogen has five valence electrons, wants to have an octet. If we look at this particular nitrogen right now, two, four, six, it has six electrons. We know nitrogen needs a lone pair because nitrogen normally from the periodic table looks kind of like this. We have a bond here, a bond here, and a bond there. There's, all, there's usually a lone pair on nitrogen. Now, there's times when it doesn't, but this isn't one of them. We'll get to those times in the subsequent video. All right, let's try this one. Well, carbon. Two, four, six, eight. So the carbon has an octet. Don't put any lone pairs on carbon in this case because carbon already has an octet. Nitrogen. Two, four, six. Nitrogen is missing the octet. So draw a lone pair on there. There we go. Remember, nitrogen, normal neutral nitrogen has a lone pair. So here it is again, has a lone pair. Over here, the carbons each have four bonds. The carbon's octets are filled. Oxygen, however, doesn't have a filled valence shell as it appears. So we know there has to be at least one lone pair. If we stop there, two, four, six, it's only six electrons. So we have to add two more. So there is the lone pairs on the oxygen. Let me draw those just a little bit bigger. Kind of exaggerating the size, but you get just so you can see them. Now remember, if you want to talk about a, a compound that contains water, how about, sorry, a compound that contains oxygen, how about water? They kind of look similar. And I mean, not, not the same, but similar, right? The oxygens look similar. So it stands to reason that oxygen with two single bonds would have two lone pairs. You know, you can kind of just remember this stuff. A little bit tougher question. Now we have two atoms that require lone pairs. Well, we know nitrogen it wants to have eight electrons, two, four, six, so it must have a lone pair. Two, four, six, eight. So their oxygen, sorry, nitrogen is satisfied. Its octet is filled. Oxygen. One, two. It only has two bonds right here. So that's only four electrons. It wants to have eight, so it must have a couple of different lone pairs. Notice oxygen here had two lone pairs. Oxygen here has two lone pairs. Oxygen here has two lone pairs. Nitrogen has one. Nitrogen has one. Nitrogen has one. Starting to see a pattern here. Let's go over here. Now we got this fluorine right here. Well, fluorine has uh, seven valence electrons. So fluorine normally has three lone pairs. But let's see if that works here. Two. Only has two electrons. Needs to have six more. Because fluorine is a nonmetal. Wants to have eight valence electrons. So fluorine will have three lone pairs. Don't forget the oxygen. Now doesn't this molecule just kind of resemble water? Not the same as water. Never said it was the same. But there are definite similarities here. Water has two lone pairs on the oxygen. So this one more than likely does too. Let's count. Two, four. Yep, definitely needs two more lone pairs. One, two. That's six total. Two more. That's eight 
total electrons around the central oxygen. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. Let's look at this one here. Well, I think all of you will agree there are strong similarities, not the same, between this one and that one. You have a carbon to oxygen double bond. That's called carbonyl. Carbonyl is very common. The oxygen will have two valence electrons. Let's count. Two, four, six, eight. So the oxygen has eight valence electrons. Okay. Now we have a tougher one over here. This is by far the hardest one on the screen. Remember, everybody wants to have an octet. That's the first thing you have to remember. Let's examine the nitrogen. Nitrogen, as it's drawn, has two, four, six, eight. As it's drawn, the nitrogen has eight electrons. So don't put any lone pairs on that nitrogen. It already has an octet as it's drawn. It also has a, a plus charge. So it's a cation. Now we're going to do a subsequent video where we talk about formal charge. But don't worry about that for right now. Just worry about this nitrogen has eight electrons already. The oxygens, however, need to be dealt with correctly. Well, this oxygen has two, four, has four electrons already. So it needs to have four more. There you go. This oxygen over here has two. It needs eight. It only has two as drawn. So eight minus two is six. So this oxygen needs to have six electrons. So this particular oxygen, even though it's not drawn very well, has six uh, additional electrons. Uh, in other words, three lone pairs. Let me draw that. I'll just draw that slightly bigger so you can see it. Okay, so this is just a blow up of that. I think this is a little clearer on, on, your, on your iPhone screen probably. All right, so that's what you have to be able to do. You have to be able to uh, understand where the electron lone pair, where the lone pairs should be because they're not always drawn. All right, my advice on an exam or quiz or whatever, you have a structure that I give you or your faculty member gives you, just draw the lone pairs in right away. Just put them in. That way you know they're there, and if you need them to answer the question, you'll, they'll be there for you to see so they can inspire you to the correct answer. All right, now guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, slap that like button, leave me a comment down below, let me know what problems that you're working on in your chemistry class, maybe I can help you out, make a video just for you. And with that, guys, I really would like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really does help out YouTube creators. When you subscribe, it lets YouTube's algorithm know that our videos are useful to students and that maybe YouTube should recommend us more. It also keeps me personally very encouraged when I have people subscribing to my channel trying to learn chemistry. I find that very encouraging on a personal level. Now with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbetts at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.